Um, so we've pulled up censusreporter.org. Um, can you give us a brief demo of how Census Reporter works? Sure. So as you can see from the front page, there's sort of two main ways to use Census Reporter. There's the profile of a specific place, and you can also explore the many, almost 1,500 tables that are in the ACS. So first I'll start with the profile page. So you can type in the name of a place. Now this may look a little bit different. This is the last feature that we're changing, but the pages you get to will be the same. So for today, if you type in the name of a place, like Chicago, it offers you suggestions of possible things you might mean so that we can make sure that we get exactly the right spot. And so I can pick Chicago, Illinois from the menu or anyone else. And then when I choose that and hit return, it'll go and it'll show us the profile page for Chicago. So the goal of this page is to give you all the key facts for that one place in an easy to find uh, view. So at the top we have some basic information including the parent geographies as we say that contain the place. If there's more than one you can click on it to see the list of them. And you can click on these to go to the similar page for any of these. And then as you scroll down the page, we have sections for different kinds of data. And we have uh, prominent charts and numbers. And we always try and have context for figures as well. So we have a section for demographics, economics, families, housing, and social characteristics. And for each one, we've sort of tried to identify from interviews with journalists and review of other documents that are published by the Census Bureau, what are the figures that most people want to have right in front of them. And then we try and put those again. Uh, when it makes sense, we use charts to give you a view of stuff, or we make the numbers very prominent so you can see them. You'll see as we mouse over, sometimes some extra information is revealed. The American Community Survey is a, is, a, is a survey, so the numbers are estimates, not exact figures, and there are margins of error. So you'll see that uh, in various places, you'll see something like plus or minus, in this case, 0.2 years. Or as you mouse over the charts, we show that um, the, uh, actually, the margin is a little bit less prominent on the charts because we want to not clutter things up too much. But, um, we also show comparative values. So we sort of determine two nearby larger places that you might reasonably want to compare. So Chicago is in a large metro area. And you can see the, how the median age of Chicago proper relates to the metro area and the state at large. And similar values show when you mouse over the bar charts and the donut charts. Um, so another thing that you can do with any one of these charts is you can see the data that underlies it. So generally look for show the data like this. And when you click on it, we'll reveal a table. And you can copy and paste this if you just want these numbers. And in this view, we show both the percentage value and the absolute numbers. You'll note that in most places, what the statistics we present are percentages of the population rather than absolute numbers because absolute numbers can be hard to, to know whether that's a lot or a little. So in general, we prefer percentages, but sometimes you want to get the actual number. Another thing, once you get to this level, we tell you the exact uh, ACS table that it comes from. In this case, the race, there are many tables about race, but this data comes from table B03002. And then you can actually click from here and view that table in, uh, in more detail. So I'll click and show you that. So for this table, we can see detailed uh, statistics for all the different combinations of uh, Hispanic and not Hispanic in different races. Uh, and by default, we choose a few nearby areas, uh, in this case, Chicago, the metro area. You can remove some or you can add. So maybe we want to dial this in a little bit. We remove the United States, we remove Illinois. And another thing that you can easily do is see all similar places within a container. We kind of just grab them for you. So maybe I want to see about the zip codes of Chicago so I can have some idea of how it varies within the city. I click on that and it will add all the zip codes that are in or partially in Chicago to what I can see. So you'll see at the beginning, Chicagoans might be surprised to see a 46 here uh, because most Chicago zip codes begin with a 6, but those should be Northwest Indiana, which is uh, just barely overlapping probably with some of Chicago. Um, or just on the outskirts, but close enough that it gets included. Anyway, so here you can see all the figures. That, as I mentioned, these default to percentages, but you can click this button to get the absolute numbers instead. And of course, uh, you can download all this data if you want to do your own things with it over here in the top corner. You can download it as a CSV or an Excel file, um, and you can also use GIS data. Oops, I probably didn't mean to click on that, but you can get GeoJSON as well as shapefiles and KML that you can then take into mapping tools and the data and the geographies are connected so it becomes very easy to make yourself a map to visualize the data. Now we also have a map. Uh, these maps are should be used with caution because things like margin of error could make some things that look like they're in one bucket. If the error was taken into account, they might go into another. But we wanted to have something that could give you a quick glance of where there might be something interesting to look at. 
Another challenge in general was doing these automatically for all of the 700,000 plus places that are in the data for over 1,400 tables. But in general, we think it works pretty well. So it shows up with the first column in the table highlighted. You can choose a different column by clicking on this menu and selecting um, maybe you want to see how many black Hispanics there are, which is, in, especially in the Chicago area, a relatively uncommon designation. So you'll see the top of these buckets, which are automatically generated, is only about 1.5% of the place. And you have the same opportunity to change, add, remove places as you do on the main table view. And then the last way that we have for exploring these uh, deep census tables is what's called the distribution chart. And so with this, you can see the, the way the numbers spread out. And if you mouse over it, you can you can see which any specific places. So again, this is mostly zip codes. If you click on one, it highlights and stays locked so that if you want to see how the number, how that place relates in all the different columns, you can see that. And also, because sometimes the dots are hard to manage, in this area you can type in and ask it to highlight for you a specific place. In this case, I live in Rogers Park, so that's that zip code. And you see that gets highlighted as well. So these are some ways to explore the, the deeper part of the data. For many people, the profile page, the profile page is great for it's, it's random curiosity. Maybe you're traveling, uh, or you just read about some place in a newspaper, and you're like, oh, well, what, what's the story with that place? And so to go to that place and find it in, uh, in Census Reporter can answer your questions. You may not have noticed, but what I did there was just click on the name of, uh, well, actually, there I, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't do what I was going to explain. But, uh, you can, you can then go back to the table view. And one thing, if you want to navigate from any of these to see their profiles in the headers, the place name is only to see the profile page. So if you want to figure out what that 46 uh, zip code was doing, we can click on it and check out what's going on with that. And uh, in a minute, we get the profile page for zip code 46320. And you can see on the map that it's just on the border of Illinois. Um, also, as you'll notice, the uh, other places in the same class are on the map, so I can click and navigate directly to the profile page for other zip codes. You know, I'll look at the place that's nearby. Oh, this is interesting. This one looks like it's divided. Um, zip codes. Zip codes are a strange thing. You have to be careful when using them because they're not really meant to be on a map. They're, they're meant to just be how the Postal Service manages itself, but that, that's for another, another time. Uh, so here we are back at the profile page. One thing I'll just point out is you can also go directly to any table that you know of from this section of the page. So if you, uh, maybe you want to look at education, you can type in here and uh, it will select, suggest for you tables that have that phrase in it. And then you can look at all the possible tables and choose one. So maybe you want to see uh, the re relative educational attainment of men and women of different ages. You can click on this. And then it gets you to the same kind of table view we were looking at, focused on the place that we were looking at, in this case, 46327. But again, you can add uh, more places or divide the place up. So uh, there's a lot of features to this, but that's a quick overview of the many different things. One other thing we are hoping to keep developing, this is a work in progress, but um, as you might have guessed when you were looking at those table names, they're a little bit esoteric. They use technical language. They're uh, not always easy to understand. So we're gradually developing a body of help text where we try to explain this to make it a little easier for people to use. It may be slightly less technical language than the census bureau uses. Sometimes we um, go for clarity instead of absolute precision. And uh, so there's many pages here where you can get a little bit more of an idea about uh, different aspects of the census. And we hope to add to this. And in fact, we invite suggestions as to what people uh, using census reporter don't understand that well. So we have a little link up here asking you to let us know. Uh, and you can give us feedback. Also, on every page of the site, the same feedback tab is over here. And so uh, use any of these things to let us know what you find, what you don't find, and tell us what you were looking for and how you thought you should find it. And we may be able to take your input and uh, make things easier for you and for other people later. That's awesome. Thank you.